Welcome to another recap of The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 5, Episode 9, The Tipping Point. This has been a very difficult episode for me. Um, I've kind of wanted to think about it for actually for a couple of days before doing this recap. Um, it hits a lot of sensitive subjects and um, yeah, I just, I, I wanted time to sort of think it over before I wrote out my notes and thought about what I wanted to, um, to kind of present and for us to discuss. Um, first of all, I want to welcome you. Uh, welcome to my Shady Tribe. I'm really happy to see you. Thank you to all my subscribers. Um, if you would like to join us, I invite you to please press the little red button, subscribe, and ring that bell right next to it if you want to be notified when there are new uploads, which happen pretty, pretty frequently. Um, also, you can like, you can comment. Everyone knows who's already a part of this that I love your comments. I answer all of your comments. And um, if you are a new subscriber, please just go down in the comments and put, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm a new subscriber. And uh, I want to give you a shout out on both uh, on the channel and also in the comments. So um, I'd love to hear from you. All right, now we jump right into the fray. We are at the wine tasting that Giselle had hosted, which we already know from where we left off last episode turned into a massive fray between Monique and Candace. Um, yes, Monique and Candace have had this smoldering resentment. Yes, there's been a lot of hard feelings. Yes, Candace has said she's done with her, that she doesn't think there's any chance of salvaging a friendship. Yes, Monique is definitely bitter and probably unforgiving over um, Candace's friendship with Charisse because Charisse was such a cheerleader for the story of Monique um, having an affair with her personal trainer. Although that was now quite a while ago. Um, it just seems like there's just there's just a permanent kind of ugly scar between Monique and Candace that even though they have been friends is just not going to heal and certainly not after what is happening here at the winery. Um, first of all, let me tell you that I think that everything that I'm about to describe and everything that if you've already seen the episode you saw happen um, is real. <laughs> I almost wish I could say, oh, the producers set this up for ratings. Let's have a big girl brawl. Ha ha ha. If you saw it, you know, it wasn't funny. It was distressing. It was disturbing. Um, especially because you know how much I love these ladies. And you know that Monique has always been an especial favorite of mine. These are women that for, for the most part, I have liked to think, you know, young girls can look up to. Um, we'll go a little bit into their backgrounds shortly, if you don't know, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're you know, accomplished, educated, well-mannered, you know, all of these things. And, um, and that's why this hurts so much. Okay. So, uh, Candace put her hand in Monique's face, which no, nobody likes that. Um, you know, basically like, no, you know, like, back off, back off, back off, lay off, lay off, lay off. And Monique did something which is, you know, definitely uh, triggering to people and that she starts flipping her hair and flipping her hair. It's actually Candace's wig. She starts flipping it and flipping it and flipping it. It, you don't, it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. Women don't like people messing with their hair. 
I mean, it's like, it's one thing if you're playing around, you're swimming in the lake in your bathing suits and you're playing around with your friends, but you know, this is TV, you're done, your, your hair is done in a certain way. It's like if you're at a, an event and you're done up and you've been styled and someone starts messing with your hair. It's not, it's not okay. It's an invasion of personal space. Just as, you know, Candace putting her hand in Monique's face is also something that is a, a real trigger for a lot of people. However, <laughs> I have watched this over. I even watched it with my husband. I even made my husband come in and watch this whole scene with me to get his opinion. Um, and first of all, I want to tell you, see the way all the producers and even the cameramen have, have run in here to break this up? That's how you know it's real. If they were staging a fight, they wouldn't have broken the fourth wall. They would have let the fight happen and you know, then they would have backed off. We all remember on The Real Housewives of New Jersey, the episode where Danielle Staub grabbed Margaret's hair and pulled, kind of pulled it back and forth and basically gave Margaret uh, whiplash. I mean, that was another quite a violent moment in Real Housewives history where someone was actually hurt um, and someone was truly um, appeared to be out of control. And I'm trying to remember, I'm gonna have to go back and look at it again, whether the producers came in and tried to break it up or whether it was just the boutique owner and the other ladies who tried to break it up. Um, because that had a lot of the artificial to it. Remember there was Teresa telling Danielle, do it, do it, do it, do it, encouraging her to go over there. She's like, should I go pull her hair? And Teresa encouraged her. Um, which was caught on camera and later played back to Teresa, much to her chagrin. And the answer is yes, a producer and a cameraman did step in, um, but they didn't really need to intervene because Danielle did the whole thing pretty quickly and then immediately walked out. Um, and again, the whole thing had a very kind of staged feel. Well, we know that it was planned. She knew she was going to do it. She didn't just do it out of rage. Um, that was not pure cold rage. That was more of a calculated um, trying to, you know, trying to sort of show off how cool she was and, you know, how she was in charge of the situation. So it was actually quite different. Um, but in this case, look, you, you have everyone available, the producers, you know, the, the cameramen, the sound people, everyone is diving on this, trying to break them up. And let me tell you something, Monique has one strong grip because a whole lot of men were trying to break that grip on Candace's wig. And they had, it, it took a lot, it took a lot to pull them apart. Um, okay, the whole thing is though, this, really violent moment, uh, because it was violent, um, no horrible words were exchanged. It didn't come on the back of someone saying, of Candace shouting, you know, well, everyone knows that you and your personal trainer have been running all over, we're running all over town together and you're a whore, you know, whatever. There was no like really strong triggering words. It was more just gestures. It was Candace's hand in her face and then, um, and then Monique, flipping her hair and Candace being like, don't do that, don't do that. Um, but uh, what happened is um, it turned into Monique holding her by the hair, pulling her hair as hard as she possibly could, her wig. And please remember that wigs are held on by wig clips and wig clips are fastened onto your actual hair. So usually there's little, a good wig will have all these little clips around the front that go into your actual hair so that it doesn't just fall off, you know, like you're a low rent drag queen. I mean, these wigs are very expensive and they should be very firmly uh, put in place. So in other words, by pulling and pulling and pulling and finally actually managing to pull it half off, she also would have taken a good bit of uh, Candace's hairline along with the wig, which is not funny. Um, she was also hitting her repeatedly about the face and head. 
so basically what you had was you had Monique who is a tall girl like me Candace is little Candace was certainly acting like a brat and behaving inappropriately and being aggressive in her own way in the beginning but what ultimately happened was you had Monique losing everything and becoming a physical danger to Candace okay um, I'd like to say this is junior high school behavior, but these are not junior high school students, so we can't just dismiss it. Um, they actually have to take Candace away to protect her from Monique, which reminds me in The Real Housewives of New York, when we had that fight from last season where Dorinda found out that, that um, John Medesian had taken money or borrowed money from Tinsley's fiance, Scott, and that humiliated Dorinda, that Dorinda, who was also drinking, became so enraged they felt that she was a danger to Tinsley and they had to remove Tinsley from the house. That did not escalate into anything like this, but it could have. So they had to take her away. So now they're taking Candace away. And, you know, initially she's like, why are you, ta I haven't, I'm not the one that, I didn't really go too far, so um, why am I being taken away? She feels like she's being punished, but then I think she realizes, no, this is good. Uh, because Monique is trying everything she can to break out of the room that she's been put in. She's trying to get her hands on that door and get out and break past the director or producer and get, she wants to get back to Candace so that she can continue to beat her up. You know, she's like, you know, I'll kill her, I'll beat her up. I mean, it, it was, uh, it was, it was over the top and it was even more disturbing that Monique was able to kind of stand there looking calm while her mind was saying, I need to get my hands on Candace again so I can finish inflicting physical harm on her. All right, um, she has no self-control. Um, a lot of them have tempers. This is very distressing. I'm, I'm really disturbed by this, especially because, like I said, you guys know how much I love, I love Monique. Loved. <sighs> All right. And the, the other thing is, it is a fight basically over nothing. This thing, this, this old, this is now old gossip about Monique and her personal trainer. Um, yeah, it wasn't the best thing for Candace to go stir up a friendship with Charisse at a time when she and Monique were on the rocks. But still, I mean, this is not, nobody killed anybody. Nobody had their children banished to Siberia. I mean, it's just not that dramatic. It's not that big of a deal. Um, okay. Obviously, Monique doesn't see it that way. And again, I'm the first one to say I hate people spreading gossip that could break up families. So I'm not saying that what Candace did was okay. It wasn't. It was not right of her to go to Charisse, and it was not right of her to be on that team because that was basically team let's break up Monique's family by tacitly approving of gossiping about her and her personal trainer, whether it happened or not. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, all right. The reason why I'm so disturbed is because this whole thing is reinforcing stereotypes that we do not need to have out there right now. And I had a long conversation with my husband, really long conversation over this. This ended up being, this episode was a whole thing. <laughs> It became for me a whole thing. I actually saw snippets of it and I watched it a little late because I knew I was going to be uncomfortable watching it. And then when I watched, while I was watching it, I was super uncomfortable. And then after I watched it, like I said, I had to spend a couple days kind of digesting it. Okay. Um, sometimes when I pick up my hand, I don't know if you notice that I have these little things. You know, when I go out, I wear jewelry, but when I'm around home, I don't, I don't wear my jewelry. I wear my medic, I, I wear my wedding band and I wear on my right wrist a few things that are never taken off. Um, one of them is a sacred string from a Hindu temple, um, a very holy, it's actually the largest Hindu temple in the world. It's in a part of, uh, of Delhi in India called Noida and my friend's family actually built that temple. 
So um, this is a, a string that was tied on me there with a blessing when I went, um, when I visited that place. And it was a very, very special place, very special place. Okay, I have this narrow gold cuff that says, it says Terebane Sarvatavale. Okay, this is from the Sikh faith. I'm a spiritual person. I, I do draw inspiration from different faiths. Yes, I'm Jewish and I'm also, um, I also pra practice aspects of meditation and Hinduism and Sikhism and, and even the Sikh um, leader who started the faith said that you don't have to be s any religion to be Sikh. Everyone is welcome to kind of follow this philosophy. So that bracelet um, Terebane Sarvatavale means um, peace in heaven as on earth. In other words, tranquility in heaven and on the earth. Okay. Then there's this stainless steel circle, which is a, a perfect seamless stainless steel circle. And the Sikhs wear this, every Sikh wears this, and you do not take it off, and it's called a kara, and it symbolizes, again, kind of the unity of of man and heaven and earth. It's a perfect circle. It's a circle of unity. And it also represents strength. Then I have, um, I have this little, I have this little cuff here and it says Black Lives Matter. And that also doesn't come off. And my Black Lives Matter cuff is not coming off until Black Lives Matter. <laughs> and yes, I feel for all oppressed groups in the world, but at this particular time in my particular country, this is the biggest problem in terms of groups that are, yeah, that, that, need, um, that need to be lifted up. They can only lift themselves up so far if the system is doing everything that it can to to not, um, to not assist them. And when I say the system, I don't want to sound like, you know, I think that everyone is keeping them down, but there are systemic issues in this country um, that need to be addressed. And I don't think it'll happen anytime soon. I, I think I might be wearing this bracelet for a while. Hey, God willing, I can take it off in five years. <laughs> that would be amazing. I don't know, but you know, anyway, it's staying there. Now I'm not showing you this bracelet to show it off. I don't even usually even mention it to people and here I am mentioning it on my YouTube channel. This is not political. This bracelet is not political. This bracelet is humanist. I am always concerned about groups of people who are in any way not receiving their full human rights. I think I told you my husband is a human rights lawyer so we feel very strongly about that. Okay, so the discussion I had with my husband is, at this point, do we now have to say that we have to hold black men and women to a higher standard just because there are elements of our country who are looking to put them down, who are looking to reinforce their ideas, their false ideas about, oh, they're like this, they're like that. So does that mean that we are now holding them to a higher standard and saying, no, you can't act like that because it reinforces these stereotypes when in fact they're just human beings and human beings lose their shit. I have lost my shit. Not physically, um, but I, I have hit someone. I have lost my temper so badly that uh, I have said pretty horrific things to someone. Um, you know, so I, yeah. I have, we are animals. We all have that animal side to us. I just want to tell you a few things about Monique and about Candace. For anyone that wants to say, oh, look, they're just acting like, you know, this, like H dash 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 rats. Okay. Um, or they're being GH dash 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 dash. <laughs> um, Monique grew up in Pleasantville, New Jersey. She had a very close-knit family. Um, her father instilled a, a really strong sense of strength and independence in her. 
um, when Monique was a teenager, her father wouldn't even let her drive a car until she knew how to check to change a tire and check under the hood. So her parents expected a lot of her. Um, yeah, so growing up, she was really taught very early on to be a strong girl. She was the salutatorian of her high school, which means she had the second highest grades of anyone in her high school. After graduation, she went to Duquesne University in Pittsburgh on a full ride scholarship. Smart girl. And uh, Candace, I mean, we all know we've met Candace's mom. We know she's a psychologist and we know that she's also from a, an upscale family. Um, she grew up, she was born in Biloxi, Mississippi, but she grew up in Atlanta. Um, both of her parents were Air Force physicians. Her mom a psychologist. I don't know what type of medicine her father practiced, but they were both um, physicians. Um, at an early age, she learned what excellence was like, really from looking at her parents. Her parents excelled at everything they ever did. Um, she graduated from Howard University. Uh, she studied African studies there. Um, she served in the, a tenure in the White House. She was at the Offices of Public Engagement and Intergovernmental Affairs. And she um, was a liaison between the White House and the uh, African American community for President Barack Obama. And she served as a staffer on Obama's 2012 reelection campaign. Okay, in other words, these are not H dash 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 rats or GH dash 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 girls. They're not. <laughs> these are basically, you know, their, their, their upbringing wouldn't have been that dissimilar to my own sort of upper middle class. And um, I mean, obviously I can't claim to understand the black experience and I, it wouldn't be exactly the same, but listen, they were, you know, they're, they're pr pretty privileged backgrounds. And, uh, and they were raised with all the manners in the world. Okay. And again, so was I, so was I. I had all those privileges and I was raised with all of the correct, you know, I actually went to, um, to classes where you learned etiquette and how to eat at an elegant restaurant when I was like a little girl, you know, putting these little girls sitting around a table with all of this, you know, different forks and all that for each dish and um, how to get in and out of a car like a lady, all these things, okay? But that still hasn't stopped me from once and again in my life, very rarely, especially as I get older, but once and again in my life, sometimes something comes out in me that's just like, don't F with me. And I don't, it's the animal side of me, I guess. So why should I expect any better or anything different from Monique or from Candace? Well, I think it's because in the case of Monique, it just, it was just so intense. I mean, maybe what we're talking about here is just somebody who really needs anger management. I'm gonna jump ahead to something else in the show that actually happens a little later in the show, but I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead to it because I thought it was really interesting. Her mother taught her, don't start a fight, but if someone else starts a fight, stomp on their foot, pull their hair, and hit them about the face. Mm. Yeah, no one ever taught me how to fight. <laughs> so I, you know, and again, that, that might be maybe her mother was bullied in school or something like that. I don't know what her mother's upbringing was. It doesn't really matter. But the fact is, I thought that was interesting that she said that. Um, so that's a different, that, I just wanted to bring it up because she brings it up. Um, but that still does not negate the fact that Candace and Monique should not be acting this way by every measure, by every metric that how we would expect them to act. This would not be it. So again, yeah, I think that my husband was right. I think I was holding them to a higher standard and um, I don't, I think that's another kind of form of, of looking at people differently through a different lens because of their ethnicity. Candace is really broken after this. When she's in the car, she calls Chris and she's like, this is not me, I don't wanna be, I'm, I got in a fight. 
This is I'm horrified. I mean, Candace is, is a very spicy and has a very bad temper. We've seen it before, but you know, to be in a really strong physical fight like this, although mostly it was Candace being whooped on by <laughs> Monique. It's not funny. I shouldn't be laughing. Uh, still, you know, she was involved in a physical altercation in the beginning. Definitely she was participating in that. Monique does not think she did anything wrong while Candace is horrified. Uh, we see Wendy briefly the next day and she said she is constantly worried about being a good role model. Okay, that's okay if you want to put that on yourself, but it's not for me to put that on you, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, but Wendy is like, yeah, you know, this, I, I don't want my, I don't want Cameron, my little girl when she grows up, or my boys to see me being a bully or engaging in physical altercations. But we've already seen, what does Wendy have? A terrible temper. It's already come out at the lake house. So um, anyway, it, Wendy is afraid of exactly what I said. She feels like an incident like this gives fuel, you know, gives what the racists are looking for, what racists are looking for. Um, okay, now to Giselle. Uh, we are... Uh, watching Giselle kind of pack, getting ready to take the girls down to Atlanta. She's going to show them their new restaurant that uh, Jamal bought for them. It's called Arizona's in Atlanta. And uh, it's an existing restaurant that they're going to take over. So they're going to go down there and see it and check it out. And they're going to have a grand reopening. Okay. Um, while she's getting ready, Giselle is on the phone with Robin. And Robin says to Giselle... She saw the devil in Monique's eyes. She's like, mm -mm, that was not okay. Okay, we, we flash over to Candace. She has a sore neck and a, and a very sore hairline, which I'm not surprised. I know that a lot of that hair was pulled out around here. And she's like, her forehead is, is very sore. But, you know, Chris, her husband's like, do you need to go to the doctor? And she's like, no, no, it's not, you know, it's just, it'll be fine. It just is a little painful. Um... And you know what? I just want to remind you, at one point, these two were friends, hugging friends. <sighs> All this over her friendship with Charisse. It's too much. Um, okay, now we move over to Karen and Ray. It's Ray's birthday. He's been feeling a bit ignored lately, so um, Karen wants to bring over a chef, and she wants to actually, this is nice, rather than have a chef and a server kind of do everything, she wants to really help the chef cook dinner so she can participate in making the dinner for Ray's birthday, which is nice. Um, he says he feels ignored lately because of her business, but that confuses me because Karen's business, her perfume, is not that big time. I don't think that there is that much going on that it would like be taking her all over the world and all over the country to promote it. I mean, I wish for her that that was the case, but it's not. So I'm not, I'm, I'm confused about that. But anyway, um, she says there's a deeper disconnect between them and she is looking for some kind of counseling, which she has to approach gently with him. Karen is really uncomfortable with the Candace Monique fight. You could see her during the fight. Everyone else was actually in there trying to remove Monique's hands from Candace's wig and from hitting her. And Karen was concerned, but she was definitely back. She was out of it. She was standing back slightly. Um, okay. Um, all right, Giselle and the girls go down to Atlanta, and I'm not gonna talk too much about the restaurant because that restaurant has been a lot of trouble. Um, before they actually took possession of it, before Jamal took possession of it in the girl's name, it had uh, health inspection issues. It failed two health inspections back in August of 2019, which is really bad for a restaurant. These things always end up getting out. And then, you know, once a restaurant fails a health inspection, that's just not the reputation you want to have. Um, it can really do a lot of damage. Um, then when uh, Miss Rona came to town, unfortunately, the restaurant was not able to maintain that kind of social distancing, you know, dining model that was necessary, even though Georgia wasn't that strict of a state, still, they were not able to, um, to manage along those lines. So the restaurant failed and it permanently closed. So that's why I'm not really going to talk about the whole, you know, the girls touring the restaurant and the, and the 
the, the grand reopening because it's a little sad and we already know that the restaurant is no longer in existence. So I hope that does not, is not some kind of omen for Jamal and, and Giselle's relationship. But yeah, the restaurant did not work out. Okay, and you know what I just have to say? I look at pictures of Jamal and I see the younger Bobby Brown, which is not good. <laughs> All right, Monique is losing me. We're now in the home. Uh, Monique is there with her, with her daughter and um, she's working on her hair. She's brushing out her hair. And this is her toddler daughter, who's completely, you know, well-versed in the English language and understands what's being said around her. And um, she is talking about the fight in front of her daughter and basically how she did what she had to do. She had to stand her ground. She's not, basically, she's not sorry that she fought Candace. And she's defending her actions. And she's calling Candace batshit crazy. Uh, look at the fight. Just look at the fight. Um, yeah. Look at the footage. Um, okay, and this is actually when Mo Monique says, you know, my mom told me don't start a fight, but if someone does, you step on their foot, you pull their hair, and you slap them about the head and face. Monique, you were not defending yourself. Candace was no physical threat to you. Putting her hand in front of your face and... Yeah, there, there was something with a wine glass that I'm still confused. Somehow Monique has a little cut on her mouth. Uh, this is going to come up again next week. I'm not sure what happened there, but I definitely did not see Candace take a wine glass and smash it into her face. I don't know if maybe Monique broke a glass and then picked it up to throw it. I don't know. I, but I, 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 I looked really carefully at that footage, and I did not see what happened with the wine glass. Um, anyway. All right. Um, but that's, that, that's, not, that's not good. That's not a good thing to teach your daughter. In Atlanta, Giselle's dad uh, picks up her and the girls. Um, dad has quite a lot to say about Jamal, mostly that, uh, well, you know, he's a, a womanizer with a lot of, you know, that he never really had faith in him. And uh, we learn from Giselle herself that Jamal even cheated on Giselle before they were married. He had you know, multiple times cheated before they were married. So needless to say, her father did not attend their wedding. He does not support this relationship. I don't blame him. He's a father. I totally get it. Um, I don't think Jamal seems like a good bet. Um, you know, men can change, but this is a big a big ask, as they say, with Jamal. Okay, um, Ashley and Michael. Ashley asks for a post-nup to cover her and Dean if Michael's um, wild ways come up again. Um, she does say to Michael, well, you know what, no one's talking about, no, no, I'm sorry, she says in the confessional, she says, well, you know, at least no one's talking about Michael's infidelity now. It's all about Monique and Candace. Um, but Ash is definitely worried that he will do this again and she will leave if he does this again. If he humiliates her again, she will leave. Uh, so their prenup expired after five years of marriage. So now she will receive 50% of all the assets acquired since they were married, like a norm, I, mean, I think a normal, uh, yeah, a normal marriage, basically. That's the way it is. You don't usually have any claim to property that uh, someone enters a marriage with. And I'm sure that when they were married, Ashley probably had very little money of her own and, and he had a great deal of money. Um, but then he was making money in the five years they were married. So in other words, everything that, that he's made from the date that they were married, half of it is hers. And any property acquired and anything bought in that time, yeah, she has half of that. Um, but she wants a uh, post nap because she just wants things guaranteed that they won't have to fight over. I think that means she wants to make sure that she has a, a house to live in, that, you know, that there are a lot of things guaranteed that she and Dean will be comfortable and they will have a good standard of living if anything happens a little bit above and beyond the um, having half of his assets, assets acquired since they were married, not half of all of his assets. So I think she's probably thinking mostly in terms of uh, property like having uh, some sort of property purchased for her and Dean that she doesn't have to worry about. Um, okay. And
and he's open to it. Um, he agrees that that is something that he will look into that they can work on. Okay. Um, all right, again, I'm going to skip the grand reopening of Arizona's, the restaurant in Atlanta, because we know that sadly it failed, which gives me no pleasure, but that's, I mean, look how many restaurants and how many businesses have failed because of uh, Miss Rona. All right, Karen and Ray, oh, this is tough. Um, a marriage counselor slash radio host comes over and uh, she says she's there to help them reconnect they're not as intimate as they once were um karen says ray snores that's rough i mean yeah i know that's rough um ray says karen's too busy and he feels like he's not a priority in her life um again you know come on the perfume is not that big so i don't know exactly what is taking up so much of her time but anyway uh he, ray wants more attention he would like karen to cook for him oh, i hear you there karen my husband's always like i am i mean i i i'm not uh, i don't cook and i i did cook a lot to excess and entertained with my first husband and i it just honestly i i was exhausted being martha stewart for 20 years and I know that's bad for my, you know, for my husband, for Lowell, but he's a great cook. <laughs> we eat out a lot and I try to make up for it in other ways. Yeah, I, I kind of feel a little guilty every time that's brought up or he kind of makes a joke about, you know, um, I want to send my wife, some, this is an old comedian's joke, I'm going to send my wife someplace really exotic for her birthday that she's never been to. The kitchen! Yeah, it's kind of me right now. Karen says that she needs a little bit of dating, a little bit of romance, a little bit of affection. Um, she says that she she loves him. She can't because she knows she loves him because she can't imagine a day without him. And Ray says, "I think I'm in love with Karen, but I'm unsure. Things feel different." Ouch. That's really painful for Karen. He didn't say he was out of love, but he was like, I just, I don't know how I feel right now. Things are, it's different. I know it's different and I'm unsure. Um, which, yeah, is you don't want to hear that. It's like Tanya and Sinjin, Tanya saying, on 90 Day Fiance, Tanya saying, I, I just, I, you're not my soulmate. <laughs> you, know, it's, you can't unsay these things and they can be very, very hurtful. And Karen is extremely hurt. Um, she goes off, presumably to bed, but she starts crying. She takes her mic off. Um, this is sad, and this feels real. This doesn't feel like it's cooked up by the producers. Um, yeah, so I feel bad. Um, all right. We have one last little uh, moment, one last little scene in the restaurant, which I do want to bring up because it's not about the restaurant. It's about Giselle and Jamal and her father. And um, Dad and Jamal have not even been in the same space for a long time. So this is a big deal that they're all together. Uh, Giselle is optimistic. Uh, Dad says he wants them to be happy. Um, then he leaves. He says goodbye. And as soon as he's off camera, he says, no, this is a bad move for her. He's got too many baby mamas. I think he said like seven or eight baby mamas. He's like, I'm done. He's not gonna, he doesn't wanna come back on the show and do anything else to pretend like he is okay with this. He's not okay with Giselle and Jamal. And uh, yeah, that pretty much told us everything we needed to know. So, um, all right. In the next episode, we get a little preview. Karen's gonna have everyone over. And first of all, I noticed that we seem to have a bodyguard or possibly multiple bodyguards. Not a good sign when you have a social gathering and you need a bodyguard or bodyguards to be there. But we all saw Monique and we saw the way that she was able to seem like she was calming down after the fight and then the way that she ran out. Um, did I mention that? I don't know if I even mentioned that, that she was able to break out and run, she was, she was running to try to get to Candace before she could drive off. Yeah, 
so she's pretty scary uh, when she's enraged. She's scary and she's extremely physical, so... Um, and I can see that the other ladies are going to come down pretty hard on Monique and say, you know, look, we're not sure that we want to be around you if you're going to do this. If this is in your repertoire of behavior, this is scary for all of us, which I agree with. I agree with. But I'm so disappointed because Monique has so many lovely qualities and you can't, like, someone can't do something horrible, which look, what Monique did was horrible. I mean, Candace acted like a brat. She was, you know, she instigated. But what, what fundamentally what Monique did was horrible. And her attitude about it, her complete unapologetic, no, I mean, if you mess with me, I'm going to do this. Her kind of, her whole attitude about it is unconscionable. I'm so disappointed in her, but that can't erase all the things that I like about her, the, the lovely qualities. However, you can't just simply overlook the fact that, yeah, is she a danger to her, to the other cast members? I mean, is someone else going to get in her way and have a fight with her or do the wrong thing? I, it wasn't good. It was uh, arguably, you know, the most, yeah, it was the most, um, the worst fight, the most violent altercation uh, in Housewives. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't seen every season of Atlanta, and I have not, I do not watch Dallas for specific reasons. There's a character on that show that I, no, no. Uh, so someone correct me if there's something that I might have missed either in Atlanta or Dallas or if I'm forgetting something. Um, because like, you know, Teresa tipping the table, that wasn't really hurting anybody. Um, probably the closest was Danielle grabbing Margaret's hair and whipping her head back and forth because she really did give her whiplash. But the whole thing had a, more of a stagey feel to it. I felt like we were watching raw, pure, unadulterated violence in this particular... I shouldn't be laughing. I felt like we were watching raw, pure, unadulterated, violent behavior in this particular horrible scene of the fight between Monique and Candace. Please let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Let, let me know if you think I'm overreacting, if I'm being too precious about the whole thing. I don't know. I just know that I reacted very strongly to it. I, re I reacted more, st I, I reacted as strongly to this episode as I ever have to any episode of reality television, probably. That's how much it really, it really disturbed me, as you can tell. So yeah, please let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens next week. I'll try and get it out faster, but if it's like this one again, sometimes I can just you know, go right and you know, watch an episode and think about what I want to say, especially when it's lighter, it's funny, it's easy for me to come and be, you know, light and frothy and fun. When it's heavy like this, it, I have to take a little time. I want to process it and I want to actually be careful about what, I, what I'm saying and I want to, yeah, I want to think about what I'm saying. I, this, these are in, meant to be intelligent recaps, not just, let me rehash the show and let's, you know, be silly. No, I'm actually, you know, this is also, this is anthropology and sociology and you know, it's a little bit of everything. So that's what you get with me. Um, anyway, thank you so much for joining me and uh, listening to my, my thoughts and ideas on the cast. And um, I hope that... Um, I hope that you will do me the very great service, if you haven't already, of subscribing and ringing the bell so that you can be notified every time I have a new upload. And uh, also, of course, you can like, and most of all, comment, comment, comment. Love them so much. That's like, like I said before, I, you're tired of hearing this, little presents, love getting those comments. Um, okay, so I want you to be really careful please. And, you know, I want you to be good, but not too good. So, love you guys. Bye.